Hey everyone, in this video we're going to go over the anatomy of the long bone um, and we're just going to try and keep this as organized as possible because there are quite a few um, sections that we need to discuss here, um, but we'll just talk about them one by one and um, try and keep this as simple as possible. Um, so let's go ahead and start all the way on the left at the top of this bone here. We are looking at the proximal epiphysis. Keep in mind our directional terms that proximal means closest to the trunk. So here we're looking at the humerus. Um, so that means that this end uh, is where it's going to connect with the scapula. In other words, making your shoulder joint. On the opposite end, if this one is proximal, we know that the elbow end is going to be the distal epiphysis. And then the center or the shaft of the long bone is what we refer to as the diaphysis. Now that we've got the general regional terms taken care of, let's go ahead and talk about the individual components of this bone. Um, if we look at the top, we've got very porous bone here. Uh, this is what we refer to as spongy bone. This is important because in adults, this is where we're going to have red bone marrow. So those porous regions are going to help store that marrow. As you can see, this region is blue around the edge. This is showing articular cartilage. Tell us if I spell it correctly. Articular cartilage. It's important that the epiphyses of the long bones are covered in cartilage because that's going to prevent any um, grinding or friction at the joints. And then you can kind of see this region here looks a little bit different than the rest of the surrounding spongy bone. That's because this is what is the epiphyseal line. In children, it's known as the epiphyseal plate because, or the growth plate, um, because it's made of hyaline cartilage and that's the region of growth. However, once you've reached, um, you know, your full bone length, it's going to solidify to bone. Um, that cartilage is going to be replaced with bone. Uh, so that there's no longer going to be growth. Um, right here on the outer edge, we're looking at periosteum. Peri means around, osteum means bone, so this is going to be our outer surrounding layer of bone. Just below the periosteum, we have compact bone. And then beyond that compact bone, we've got a hollow cavity that is the medullary cavity. In adults, this is going to store yellow bone marrow, which is adipose. Um, in children, this is where we're going to have red bone marrow formation. So let's go ahead and move into um, this upper right hand diagram just to kind of get a closer look here. Um, as you can see, this one here, it's very porous, lots of storage areas. This is going to be our spongy bone. In 
In this one, you can see the osteons uh, and the interstitial lamellae. They are packed together very tightly, which is why this is going to be compact bone. And then again, um, with it being the top or the epiphysis of this bone, we've got articular cartilage to prevent that friction at joint movement. And just one more to go, almost done guys. Um, here, you can see this lining, just like we had the periosteum on the outside. Here, I'll go ahead and label that. Um, our, this section here is our periosteum, so peri meaning surrounding, osteum meaning bone. We also have a layer within the bone um, that's kind of like the lining of the medullary cavity. This is the endosteum. Endo means within. This is what's going to be lining our medullary cavity, which is storing this yellow bone marrow. And again, yellow bone marrow is going to be a storage of adipose um, in adults. In children, again, this medullary cavity would be filled with red bone marrow. Um, here where we have these tight osteons, again, we've got compact bone. And then um, these fibers right here, this is actually kind of connecting, holding together the compact bone and the periosteum. This is our perforating fibers. These perforating fibers, um, like if you've ever had shin splints, it's from the periosteum being pulled and those perforating fibers being um, stretched. Um, so this is this is kind of like a connective tissue in another connective tissue. It, it's connecting that outer osteum layer, that periosteum, to the inner compact bone. Um, and then lastly, down here at the bottom, we're just showing the nutrient arteries because um, we still have osteocytes inside of this bone that are going to need a nutrient supply. And that's it for the anatomy of a long bone.